Hi everyone, I'm Ed Baker. Welcome to the Addiction Recovery Channel, otherwise known as ARC. I'm very pleased uh, today to be here with you. Uh, we're privileged to have three leaders in the field of addiction recovery uh, with us uh, today. We have Tammy Bushell, who is the director of the Human Resources Department at Edland Company. We have Peter Espen Shade, who is the president of the Vermont Alliance for Mental Health and Addiction Recovery. And we have Ron Stankovich, who is the community outreach director for uh, Dominion Diagnostics, uh, who also uh, is the co-author of the Employer Toolkit, which we'll be looking at uh, quite closely uh, today. So thank you. Thank you for joining us, and thank you so much for being on the show, folks. Thanks pleasure. for having us. Thank you. Oh, our pleasure, Ed. <clears throat> I'd, like to, I'd like to begin the show by um, uh, developing a context. Uh, the American Society of Addiction Medicine in 2019 expanded and revised its definition of addiction. The 2011 definition focused mainly on brain circuitry. The 2019 definition includes stressors um, in the environment, and I'll go into it in, uh, in detail now. This is a commentary on the definition. Quote, lack of healthy social supports and limited prospects for employment or stable housing can exert significant pressure on brain circuitry of individuals at risk for addiction. These factors influence the depth of vulnerability and can present significant barriers to recovery unless addressed, close quote. So the American Society of Addiction Medicine is saying that barriers to employment can cause stress on brain circuitry that can actually make a person more vulnerable to addiction and can also thwart a person's best efforts at achieving and sustaining recovery. And um, that's where I'd like to begin today. I'd like to begin with you, Peter, because you have such extensive experience working uh, with people in recovery. I'd like you to offer the viewing audience, and it's a diverse audience, mm -hmm. A working definition, what is it? What is it when, when we say recovery? That's part one. Then part two is, in your observations over your years in this field, what, what have you seen when it comes to people in recovery struggling to achieve recovery and maintain recovery, specifically with reference to employment? Great. Th yeah, thank you. I think that that revised definition is critical. I know in Vermont, we... We, many of us operate under Johann Hari's uh, hypothesis that the opposite of addiction is connection. So we used to view uh, recovery simply as abstinence. And abstinence is obviously a, a central role in all of this. But far more important is connection, mm. is getting individuals in recovery, reconnecting to family, to housing, to employment, to hobbies, to what... You know, Gary DeCarolis calls love and purpose. Yeah. And that reconnection is the definition of recovery itself. And it certainly is the best support we know of to keep abstinence going, to keep things moving along. I was talking to somebody today who was talking about a period in their life when they were in early recovery and they were self-isolating. They had isolated for like a year, and that really resonated with me as somebody who's in long-term recovery, and we see that over and over again. And one of the great ways to get reconnected and to get purpose back in one's life is work. You know, we, work is, a, is an inherently rewarding and connecting thing, and it's one of the most valuable recovery supports we have. That's beautiful. That is a, a, a beautiful uh, response. Um, I'd like to, you know, move into Tammy's role at, at, at Edland. I mean, you were, had a couple of conversations with, with Tammy before the show, and you're in, you are animated about this. Your enthusiasm about this is just contagious. And it's just so encouraging to see someone in a position as a, a, a director of a major, a major company, a very successful company, who has you know, adopted this 
healthy attitude, this healthy approach to this, 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 this disease mm. that we call addiction, that, that, that people get better and supporting them in the, in the workplace can be such a, a substantial uh, a variable leading to success. You want to talk a little bit about your experience? Sure. So the reason I'm passionate, and I've shared this story with you, um, is that uh, a few years ago I went through a difficult time with my own uh, son who is mm, not really fully in recovery. He's kind of working mm -hmm. his, his way. Um, and as a, as a parent, um, it was frustrating for me not to be able to fix it for him, um, as I like to say. But after, you know, getting into the recovery network and understanding mm -hmm. uh, what recovery is, and it's not just yeah. abstinence, everybody has their own path, that I wanted to do my own part through Edlin. Um, and so for me, it was just trying to break down some of the stigmas. And, and the way I did that at Edlin was to share my personal story with my management team. Mm. And that was very eye-opening for Edlin as a corporation, just because they realized that um, addiction can affect everybody, anybody. It doesn't matter how you were raised, who you are, where you came from. It, there is no, there's no boundaries. It's, it's just out there. And so once they realized that, we decided, hey, we need to support people. And we just changed our entire culture. And with that, we, you know, with our interviews, um, we no longer do a traditional interview of, you know, I'm gonna drill questions back and forth to you. It's more of a conversation. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about um, who you are now and not your past. Your past is your past, you can't change it. And just getting people to understand that we are a second chance employer, and I don't mean that you only get one chance and that's it. We are there for to support you um, in your on your path, and so that's kind of how it came about. And yeah. And and what do you see as um, what's people's responses to that? How do people respond to that? Yeah. Um, it it depends. I mean, if they're coming from if it's somebody that like Turning Points has referred to us and we mm -hmm. work closely with them, mm -hmm. um, they know that they can be open and honest with us, and so they don't have that fear. Whereas if it's somebody uh, just coming in off the street on their own, um, and I ask questions about, so tell me about how come you have some gaps here on your resume, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't care. I don't care about the gaps. I just mm -hmm. want to understand who you are and, <clears throat> and, and where you've been and what brought you here. Why do you want to work here? And that usually with some encouragement, they will share their story. Yeah. And then it's about, okay, Let's see how you might fit here. And we should give them a tour and we introduce them to other people. We have a recovery coach on site who um, is there to walk them through and support them. And then we have a resource coordinator on site, uh, which is through um, uh, the United Way. And then we have EAP, which is off site, but we will also bring EAP on site if Transportation is a difficult thing. We provide uh, free bus passes to help them. We can change their schedule. So we try to make things um, as easy as possible for them during their recovery and to support them continuously. That is, that is something. I just want to stay with that for a little while because I just think it's, um, it's profound. And for the employers or people who know employers watching the show, to kind of get this information out that this is not only possible, but it it adds to the value of a workplace. It does. And adds to the success of a company. So if I'm your employee and I'm in early recovery, and I come to you and I say, hey look, you know, um, you know, my my AA group, my my special home group yep. meets Wednesdays at noon. So I have to get there, and then I like to hang out and talk a little bit after the meeting, and I'm going to need to leave at, you know, uh, a quarter to 12, and I probably won't be back until 1.30. You know, I need extra lunchtime on Wednesdays. You know, can I do that? What's your response going to be to me? Absolutely. Absolutely. We will support you. Um, there's no question. And we do that because we, we can say to them, okay, 
we can allow you to make up the time. You can work extra other days so mm -hmm. that you still get your for, full paycheck because that is important, not only for us, you know, mm -hmm. we need the labor, but also for that person because they have to be able to have that, that wage in order to maintain their housing or whatever other, you know, bills that they have going on. We all have those, right? So if, if we didn't allow them to flex their time, it wouldn't be a win-win for both. And right. that's the whole point is right. that we right. want it to be a win-win for both parties. Right. right, right. So good, so good. And it must feel good to you, Peter, to hear that they have a recovery coach on board. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's, you, you know, because that's, that's what folks in recovery need. They, they need that unique set of what's going to work for them. Everybody, you know, um, substance use disorder is just a health condition, and we, we all know that. And so with any health condition, there's some boundaries and some barriers that pop up, and we just need to help folks get over those. The same way you would if you, you know, had a new hip or had diabetes mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, hearing employers like Tammy realize that with just a little bit of coaching, they can hang on to great people is yeah. is just super inspiring. Yeah. Now I want to I want to uh, pull Ron in, but also I want to go back to the 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 actual the culture at Edland, the actual atmosphere mm -hmm. at Edland in in, in, a, in a few moments. But Ron, so here hearing this, you know what's occurring at Edland, and having had some the privilege of co-authoring the employer toolkit that deals exactly with this. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of uh, feelings, observations, comments, you know, did you have a, a, about that? Well, <laughs> sorry, Tammy, That's you know okay. I'm going to say this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when we created the first draft of the toolkit, we distributed it to a, a number of folks and parties and saying, look, this is what we've got. What are we missing? What makes sense? What needs to be tweaked? That kind of thing. But it is in draft form. And Tammy is one person we highly recruited to be part of the Working Recovery Action Team for the Chittenden County Opioid Alliance because of her positive and proactive stance in the culture and environment that she helped create at Edlin. And so after we had given it to the group, we. I forgot how the discussion started, but Tammy said, oh, I've already been handing this out to other employers, <laughs> which of is course. exactly <laughs> the end result that we wanted. And, and what was really cool about it was Tammy being able to share the interactions that she had with other mm -hmm. HR professionals, mm -hmm. those desperate to help their employees but A, did not know what to do, and B, did not know where to go to find resources. And in our first year after getting the grant from GE Healthcare, we did a survey of the Chittenden County, or Chittenden County, the Chamber of Commerce. And a couple of the questions that we asked and the answers thereof helped frame the need for this toolkit. Yeah. And one of them was, would you hire someone in recovery? And of course you have the, the outliers, those very willing and those very unwilling but about 30 to 35 percent of respondents were neutral, saying, I'm not against it, but I don't know enough about it, mm -hmm. uh, both recovery and what is substance use disorder. And we thought, wow, here's a great educational opportunity. And then the next question right after that is, okay, you hired somebody in recovery or somebody who is, has an active disease. Do you know who to turn to and where to get resources? Yeah. I think it was almost 45% said no. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that was the, the light bulb that went off for this team. Sure. It's like, <clears throat> we've got a lot of great resources in Vermont, but up until that point, no one had one point or one point of contact where you could go to find these. And, and that led to the, the idea of, we need to create a toolkit to support employers to do a couple of things. One, address stigma, change how individuals in recovery are viewed in the workplace. Mm -hmm. But not just those in recovery, what about the individuals who are struggling with yeah. substance use? Yeah. How do we create an environment where it's not only safe to say, I need help, but to shift, make that paradigm shift in terms of employer to employee? Thank you for telling us. We will be behind you to get whatever support you need. And guess yeah. what? Your job will be here waiting for you in return. Yeah. The external stressors of transportation, housing, and employment, 
you know, ASAM was absolutely right in, in redefining their definition because it's not always about genetic and environmental factors from family. Sure. It's about the daily obligations and needs that an individual has sure. in order to leave a healthy and productive life. Yeah, sure, sure. And so that led to this. So long-winded answer yeah, to your yeah, question, no, 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 it's, it's music to my ears. No, that's perfect. <laughs> I think it, it is music uh, to your ears and, 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 and our ears and, and very well uh, said, Ron, and congratulations with the employer uh, toolkit. And there, for the audience, there'll be a slide uh, lingering at the end of the show uh, where you can Google the employer toolkit and get access to it because it is a, a, a major advancement in this field. Mm -hmm. I've read it, I've seen it, and it's a step-by-step -step how to. It doesn't leave any stones unturned. And the, um, the resources involved in that piece or are, are just um, you, 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 you include just about everything. So it's uh, really it, it equips employers who might feel frightened or insecure or uninformed. It, it really um, strengthens and empowers them. And I want to I want to go into the, the, uh, the initiative, the VAMHAR initiative in a little while about friendly um, workplaces for recovery friendly workplaces. But first, back to that, 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 that culture that Ron is describing that can occur in a place of employment. You know, that stigma is, is such a major barrier and is so entrenched in our culture. And to see a, an employment, uh, an employer, a place of employment, having worked so far to eradicate stigma and create compassion, I think is, is really so interesting. And I want the the viewing audience to hear a little bit about that, that it seems to me that at Edlin you wouldn't be able to uh, succeed the way you are unless you're really doing something about stigma, about the way that people see people with substance use disorder. Uh, I'll be honest, it, we're not perfect. I mean, mm -hmm. we still struggle every day with, mm -hmm. you know, perceptions that occur. But I think it's it's bringing those when you know when I hear somebody who <clears throat> who is making a comment that um, is a little off to correct it, you know, yeah, to yeah, have yeah. a conversation with somebody. Um, I go back to the employee that I have currently who's been in recovery for three years. He's been through the recovery coach training. Him sharing his story with his coworkers is yeah. so much more profound than me. Yes, I'm a recovery coach, but I'm the director of HR. Mm -hmm. He's their peer. And for them to look at him and go, wow, you've really turned your life around wow. and mm -hmm. you are um, a shining example of exactly what we're trying, that cha helps change mm -hmm. the stigma. And he is proud and yeah. he should be proud because um, he's worked really hard to get there. So it's those everyday things that we try to do, but we're not perfect. Like I said, we still struggle. There's days when, you know, it's not going well when somebody who is in the early stages of their recovery is really struggling. Um, and it's a lot of the managers or myself who is trying to coach them to say, we're here to help you, but we can't do it for you. Yeah. You have to meet us part of the way. Yeah. You know, we'll give you the tools, the resources, but you have to take it and move forward. We can't can't do it for you. So that's still sometimes a struggle. Not, none of us are perfect. And, and we've got to face this, that we'll be dealing with stigma f probably for, for a few more generations. Great. But we're really making progress. Oh, I agree. And the employer toolkit, the narrative around brain disease, substance use disorder, stigma, compassion, is absolutely beautiful. It's poetic. It's like music to my ears. So thank you for that, Ron. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, yeah. And, and uh, the work that Vamhar does, you know, Recovery Day, mm. you know. That was the, fun. That was fun. <laughs> it was it really beautiful. Was. How many people were at Recovery Day uh, this year? I think over 200. We had standing room only this year. Over 200 amazing. people. Yeah. The legislature, the governor declaring yeah. Recovery Day. It's beautiful. The Recovery Walk in, in Burlington every year. I mean, there's, there's so much happening in, in Vermont. And we should be so proud to be uh, Vermonters and to give leaders uh, the kind of support that they need, you know, to, to, to keep carrying this torch, you know, keep, keep fighting this fight and, and, and uh, eventually to actually eradicate stigma. Yep. So people with substance use disorder can be somebody like, I have type 2 diabetes. 
you know, I need medication, I need to change my lifestyle, I need some accommodations that work. Same exact thing. Exact thing. Exact yeah. thing. Really so, well said. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so proud to be here with, with you and, and um, you know, that, 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 that this um, movement, it's nothing short of a movement, mm -hmm. is resonating in Vermont. It's resonating in the counties of Vermont, in the communities of Vermont, in the regular people of Vermont. This is what's important. It's got to be from the ground up. Yep. You know, and um, it's really something. So I want to move now into um, what, I, what I think is a really extremely exciting initiative. And I want you to talk at length about it. It's this uh, recovering friendly workplace initiative. Peter, would you, would you talk about that a little bit, please? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things uh, that folks might be interested about this. First off is exactly what you were saying, <clears throat> is this, the recovery friendly workplace movement has also been a kind of a grounds up <clears throat> thing. It has not been um, us in the recovery community going to employers saying you need to be recovery friendly, we need to figure out this problem, blah, blah, blah. It's been uh, leaders in the business community, leaders in the recovery community mm -hmm. coming to us saying we want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. We realize there's value to this. We realize that this um, health condition is just part of you know, the human condition mm -hmm. and we want to do the right thing by our employees. You know, Tammy and I were joking earlier about HR directors. HR directors have been working to have recovery-friendly workplaces probably for decades. You know, working with their employees, helping them get over some of these hurdles with substance use disorder or other health conditions. And they know a, a profound amount yeah. about how to care for people while keeping them engaged and employed. So those folks were coming to us saying, you know, we've got an epidemic now of this particular health condition of substance use disorder. We want to share what we know and learn from others and create recovery friendly workplaces. Wow. So that was really kind of amazing. It's not one of these top down initiatives like you must do what we tell you to do. They're the ones who are sharing best practices with us. We're sharing recovery best practices with them. I think there's tremendous promise. So it's, it's almost like VAMHAR, the creation and the um, public awareness about VAMHAR and your role in recovery gave this particular group, HR people, a place to go. Before you, there was really no place for them to go. Well, there were, you know, there was the phenomenal work of the toolkit mm -hmm. we've been talking mm -hmm. about, and I think that folks have heard about that and have seen some of the great examples at at Edland mm -hmm. and at Twincraft and many, many, many other employers mm -hmm. who are currently doing progressive recovery-friendly work, mm -hmm. and now we're hearing, you know, statewide that folks want to, to learn from this stuff. So what's, what's unique about it? What kind of, I, I know it's in its beginning mm -hmm. phases, but what kind of concepts are, are shaping it at this point? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's two main things, and they're all rooted in recovery coaching. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, as we've been discussing, there's no one-size-fits-all recovery plan for mm -hmm. someone. It's not like, oh, here you go, you know. So that's all recovery coaching is going to be the way forward, we believe, um, for long-term recovery. So we, what's unique about this plan is we are going to see that employers have recovery coaches, that HR directors, managers, coworkers, have a recovery coach they can turn to and say, hey, I have some questions about my employees. Everything from how do I know if they're still using to the more common questions, which are how can I be the most supportive as possible? Nice, nice. So I think that's gonna be a nice sort of innovation that's coming out of this. Yeah. And then for the employees themselves, we wanna see that every employee whether they're working at you know, one of our flagship um, uh, corporations like Edland, mm -hmm. um, have a recovery coach, or if you're just working for a local landscaper, 
you know, with a staff of three that you get a recovery coach. So we're trying to bring people together, thanks to the leadership of others who are yeah. saying you need to bring people together, and then aligning uh, employers with recovery coaches and employees with recovery <clears throat> coaches and build a simple Vermont-sized system <laughs> that is going to um, <clears throat> going to realize that. I think there's great promise. Why I know there's great promise is recovery coaching is an evidence-based practice. Yeah. You know, because of stigma, you know, we didn't even know what to do with recovery necessarily, because yeah. back in the day, you know, it was all underground. Mm -hmm. right. And now that we're bringing evidence-based practices mm -hmm. and bringing some light to this, we know that that we can uh, we can bend this curve. We really can. We can bend this curve. We can. I like that. And it's bending towards <laughs> you know some progressive, thoughtful <clears throat> justice and, and health for people. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, for for the viewing audience again, we can bend this curve. Uh, I like that. And um, the link to this show is available on the CCTV site. So for the viewing audience, if you're just a regular person and you're watching the show and you know an employer mm -hmm. and you want to give the employer access to the show, send them the link to the show so they can Absolutely. watch the show. At the end of the show, there'll be a lingering slide with access to the employer toolkit. Mm -hmm. If you want to get in touch with any of the guests, uh, email me. My website will be at the end of the show. Email me and I'll put you in touch with our guests, Peter and, and, and Ron and, and Tammy, this is a, a, a seminal point in the evolution of, of recovery. This is a, a very, very special moment. And, um, you know, um, anything I can do to, to support you, I, I will do. This is very, very special. And it seems like it actually has traction. And, yeah. um, is that is that the feeling that you have, Ron? I, I do. Um, if if the one positive thing that has come out of this horrific opioid epidemic mm -hmm. is it has I, I I believe forced people to take a step back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it impossible to talk to an individual who does not have a family member or a friend or a coworker. Yeah impacted in some way, shape, or form by this disease. And it's the disease aspect, as Peter calls it, really it is a health condition and it is to be treated no different than hypertension, diabetes, or any other potentially fatal exactly. disease. Yeah. It's about proper health care, but that's only found <clears throat> when hopelessness is removed, mm -hmm. support is showcased. And as Peter was talking before about the Johan Hari approach, the opposite of isolation is connection. And the only way that connection can happen is if individuals understand that, that substance use disorder, it's not a choice. You don't wake up one day and say, you know what, I want this substance to rule every aspect of my day for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. It's not a moral failing. And for many folks, they're hit with the genetic as well as the environmental factors. And that creates a Petri dish where substance use disorder can grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it, and what we're, we're finding is that it's, it's changing the dialogue to a degree because it's all about cause and controllability. Um, you know, 10 years ago, well, Ron, you chose to drink um, so you caused this problem, um, and you could control, you, why don't you just stop? Mm -hmm. When you utilize that paradigm, it creates stigma that mm. you caused this problem, it was your choice, guess what? You gotta deal with it. But when you look at another fatal disease where an individual is viewed, well, you didn't choose cancer, you couldn't control having cancer and therefore you didn't cause it. Yeah. We treat individuals with other fatal diseases like the truly remarkable and wonderful people they are. They're survivors right. because they had the support and they also had the internal fortitude to step forward and get help. 10 years ago, folks 
with substance use disorder did not have that luxury. And in fact, today, many will not self-disclose, both those in recovery and those facing an active addiction who want help will not share that for fear of how they're going to be judged, how they're going to be spoken to directly or hearsay, well, so-and-so said this about you. Um, who wants to deal with that? Um, I yeah. just want help. But if this is the reaction I'm going to get, I'm just going to continue to do what I'm doing. Sure. So it has to be communal on a, on a local, state, national, and worldwide level that if we are going to judge an individual, let's do it factually. Let's look at it from an evidence-based mm -hmm. perspective. Just as substance use disorder is progressive, more importantly, so too is recovery. Yeah. Um, that with the proper support, with the love, with the connection, an individual who chooses a life of recovery not only lives a wonderful life, but they contribute back to the community. And the last point I'm going to make is one of the things when we created this toolkit, you, you get to folks like Tammy, that's an easy sell. But what about the employers who, well, what's in it for us? Well, I'm glad right. you asked that. I'm going to tell you the answer from the National Safety Council. <laughs> and I'm going to read the first one because I want to get this correctly. What the study found is that employers who provide access to treatment produce a cost saving exceeding costs by a 12 to 1 ratio. 12 to 1. Mm -hmm. right. So from an economic perspective, you're not only doing the right thing, but it makes sense from your company to support mm -hmm. your employees. What they also found is that employers who are supportive in this regard, absenteeism drops by 36%. 36% reduction in absenteeism, lack, lack, lack of pay, lack of productivity, affects the bottom line of the mm. company. They also found that turnover decreased by 13%. And what I really found truly cool, so if you're wondering if you want to hire somebody in recovery or not, individuals in recovery are the least likely subgroup to leave their employer. Wow. For a variety of reasons, you know, the ability to take care of my family, but it's a big part of it is about loyalty and gratitude for being given that second chance and not just given that second chance, but an employer who's got the tools and resources to support you on your journey. Recovery is not linear. It can look like an EKG at points, exactly. especially in the first year. And that's why it's so critical that employers understand and have the tools to support an individual because slips do happen. It's yeah. part of it. Sure. Uh, any disease, there's going to be steps forward and mm -hmm. steps back. And it's no different with substance use disorder, but when people say, well, I'm afraid of a relapse, well, folks in recovery actually relapse less than other diseases like mm -hmm. asthma and hypertension. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ron. And um, it's a beautiful way to, to begin to end the show. And those statistics that are so encouraging and so positive um, you know, ref reflect quality of life, quality of life for people in recovery, quality of life for people connected to people in recovery, and quality of life really for the whole uh, social environment. You know, I think, I think, Peter, one of the things that you said early was uh, the, the quote that the opposite of, of addiction is, is connection. Yeah. And um, I think about that. And it's a, a simple, a simple statement. But you know, when you look at it, the connection really needs to be between us, yeah. the people, service providers, uh, people with resources, um, people offering services to people with substance use disorder. The the better we connect, the better we orient ourselves to science and connect to science, the more effective we are, it's our responsibility to create portals of connection for people with substance use disorder. Yes. They don't know how to connect because the brain is impaired. If we can connect and then develop ways to allow them to connect with comfort, mm -hmm. this is... Um, you know, a large part of the key, and I, and I, I, I really, I see you doing that at, at Edland, and I, I really, I want to emphasize that. And your work, Ron, with the Employer Toolkit paves the way for that, and, and your continued 
devotion to this population over quite a few years now is really, um, you know, speaks volumes to that. I mean, you've connected, you've set the stage for many, many people to connect. Well, there's so there's so many beautiful people in recovery. It's yeah. it's such a joy. It's not only an honor but a joy to work with these yeah. folks who are just have such great energy, you know. And it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And that I mean, I just have to go back to recovery day. The feeling in that <laughs> the feeling in that room yeah. is just jubilant. Yeah, <laughs> jubilant. And you know, for and it's just it's contagious. So I want to. I would like to end the show now, and um, you know, with 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 closing comments. I'll begin with Ron, and then come over to Tammy. So, closing comments to the viewing audience. You know, I think I used my closing comments earlier. Um, I, I guess the the only thing I, I would ask anybody viewing um, the show or or any employer is to please have an open mind and take prejudice, put it in your desk drawer, and view the individual for who they are, not what you may have heard through the rumorville that somebody who uses is X, Y, and Z. Yeah. This is a human being who is afflicted with a health condition, and it is incumbent upon all of us to wrap our arms around in support because if it were you or your family member, what would your hopes and aspirations be? Yeah. And we need to remember that that person is someone's father, um, someone's mother, someone's husband or wife, a grandparent, a son or a daughter, a close friend, a coworker, and the list goes on. Yeah. These are not statistics and, and they are not something that should be viewed from a negative standpoint, but how we as a culture need to wrap our arms around and support in every way possible. Yeah. And if you are, well, what's in it for me? Well, the more folks we have in recovery, the fewer who have an active disease, look at the reduction in costs, the, the, the financial costs that a society will incur and look at the benefits they will gain by somebody who is contributing to society. So. Thank you, Ron. Well, thank, so. thank you. Thank you. Peter. Yeah, I think just gratitude. <clears throat> you know, we've been talking about, you know, shining light on things and how that's really how we remove stigma. When you shine light on things, it not only sort of kills, <clears throat> you know, mold and disease, <laughs> <laughs> it also allows beautiful things to grow. And there have been some real leaders um, in the recovery movement before there was even a recovery movement. Yeah. Employers who were trying to do the right thing, people who were in the vanguard of putting these ideas together. And you know, as we slowly remove stigma, we're gonna see a lot of beautiful things growing. And we're just really grateful to the, uh, you know, to the folks. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, of people who set this up for us. And True. we need to honor them by just keep moving in a really positive, joyous way. <clears throat> keep moving yeah. in a positive, joyous well way. Thank you. Well Thank said. you. Thank you. Come in. I would, I would agree with Ron. I was going to say something very similar, but as an employer, um, one, I would agree, keep your mind and your heart open. Uh, and if you still aren't sure, if you still have trepidation, use the toolkit. There is a great um, information in there about bonding, uh, which helps relieve some of that stress for an employer um, if they're afraid for whatever their afraidness reason is uh, to hire somebody in recovery. You won't regret it. It is an amazing thing for both parties. So I just want to say that I hope everybody will jump on board. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. So so there you have it. Uh, th this is where we are today. And um, this is light years, light years from where we were yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful uh, thing that's happening in our culture and that uh, we have three leaders here with us and there are many more leaders out there working every day, nonstop, mm -hmm. to advance this cause. So, so thank you for joining us today. And, um, you know, copy the link and spread the program. Give this uh, show to as many people as you know to keep this thing 
moving forward joyously. Joyously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you Thanks, for Ed. all you're doing.